Hi guys, I hope you're staying healthy and at home. For today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about sun protection, aging skin, and the key ingredients that you need to make sure you have in your SPF. So over the next few weeks, we're gonna to try to release lots of different videos that are gonna hopefully try and make skincare seem a little bit simpler. There are so many different types of skincare out there, so many different products, so many different brands, all claiming that they do different things and all working in slightly different ways. One such type of skincare is sun protection skincare, and that's gonna be the focus of this video. When it comes to sun protection and sun creams, there are so many different questions people ask. For example, how can you tell if one's a good sun cream compared to a less good sun cream? What about the sun cream that you can find already made within your makeup? I mean, that's pretty convenient. What about sun cream for different ethnicities? Does every ethnicity even need sun cream? What about the different type of light rays? There's UVA, there's UVB, there's some other ones as well that are worth being aware of. Does it go through glass? Does it not go through glass? Are we protected from all the different types of rays? What damage do different rays actually even do? When it comes to skin types, let's start off by talking about what skin type you have. So doctors use this scale, it's called the Fitzpatrick scale, to categorize and identify what skin type you have. And depending on what skin type you have, you're prone or vulnerable to certain things. If you have a fairer skin type, thankfully there's been a lot of different marketing and initiatives and awareness campaigns that have helped educate and teach the public the importance of sun cream because for fairer skin types, they are slightly higher at risk of getting skin cancer. So for that reason, you know, sun protection and creams are really, really important to help reduce or minimize that risk. Those at the fairer end of the scale, Fitzpatrick 1 to 3, have less melanocytes which produce melanin which offers you protection against the sun. So on the other end of the scale, more like 4 to 6, we have individuals who have more melanocytes which mean that they've got more protection against the sun and that's also what's contributing to their darker appearance. So for all skin types from Fitzpatrick 1 to 6, they're all at risk of actually suffering some of the effects of sun damage, for example pigmentation, sunspots, a little bit of volume loss, fine lines and wrinkles, rough skin, and general overall photo damage to the skin. When it comes to your skin aging, there are two main things to consider. So there's your intrinsic aging, which is gonna be your natural body clock. And essentially some people just have good genes for aging. And then there's gonna be extrinsic aging. So these are gonna be lifestyle factors which are all gonna contribute in exacerbating damage to your skin. And these include things like stress, alcohol, smoking, sun damage, pollution. They're some of the main ones. To put it another way, two people can be the exact same age and due to the extrinsic factors that they put themselves through, they can appear and age very, very different. Here's an example that I think is really, really nice to show you. It actually showcases two identical twins. So these ladies are the exact same age and they've got the same genetic code within them. So their intrinsic aging is gonna be the same. Having said that, you can clearly see one looks a lot older than the other, and that's because they've suffered a lot more of the extrinsic factors of ageing. And here's another really powerful image that's actually focusing more so on sun damage directly. So this individual is a guy who's been driving his truck for most of his life, and because of that, the left side of his face has been exposed to a lot more sun damage than the right-hand side of his face. As you can see from his photo, the two sides of his face have aged completely differently. Whilst UVB damage, which is the burning rays that can cause cancer, whilst they're generally shielded through glass, which is really, really good, the UVA rays, which are more responsible for contributing to volume loss, that's damaging your skin, um, and the rough appearance that you can see on his actual left side of his face, those are not um, restricted by glass whatsoever, and hence he suffered such extensive aging on one side compared to the other. Looking at his histology, so looking at his actual skin cells under a microscope, we can see some rather interesting changes. His epidermis is looking very uneven, his stratum corneum is looking a little bit thicker, and actually his collagen and elastin have degraded. This all results in a lack of structural support, giving him deep lines and wrinkles, pigmentation damage and sun damage that is clearly visible to the naked eye. So when it comes to everyday skin care and skin systems and what we advocate, it's always best to try and think of it in terms of three main things. So one, exfoliating the dead layer of skin cells from the very surface. Two, stimulating your own cells to produce more elastin and collagen. Three, we want to protect your skin as well to try and avoid damage. 
Protection starts with using the correct sun cream. So you want a sun protection that's going to be broad spectrum. You want one that's going to be covering both UVA rays, so they're the ones that are going to cause you pigmentation issues, loss of volume, elasticity, overall skin quality. And you're going to want one that offers protection against UVB rays, so these are your burning rays, ones that are going to cause you worse problems such as skin cancers. You're also going to want one that's maybe a mixture of both physical and chemical protection. So the difference between these two are, with physical protection, it's something that's going to work straight away and it's going to work more so via a method of deflecting the sun rays. So these are often based more on metals. With chemical protection, it actually works slightly differently. So chemical protection takes about half an hour or so to really get into your skin. And when it does get into your skin, it absorbs the radiation and the rays and it actually just converts it into heat and releases it. There's actually a research paper that was published that's really interesting that suggests that titanium dioxide is super effective against the UVB rays compared to zinc oxide, which is more effective against the UVA rays. So the combination of the two is what's going to give you that broad spectrum protection against the different types of UVA and UVB rays. Whether you have a nice cosmetically peeling sun care cream or you have one that's a little bit thicker and less cosmetically appealing comes down to the size of the particles. So where we've seen micro-sized titanium dioxide and zinc oxide particles being used, we're now seeing nano-sized particles, which are even smaller to give a nicer cosmetic appearance. So the American Academy of Dermatology actually gives some guidelines that they prescribe everyone to try and follow as best practice for how to protect yourself against the sun. They recommend daily sun protection using an SPF of at least 30 and Interestingly enough, with the SPF protection that you get within your makeup, for example your foundation, it's usually much lower level, so more like 15 compared to 30 or 50, which you'll see in the higher quality forms of sun protection. They actually advocate using a broad spectrum sun protection every two hours or applying immediately straight after you've been in a swimming pool or you've got wet. So in that instance, it's maybe not always practical to follow the guidelines, but it's nice to try and aspire to, to, to stay as protected as possible. Other simple measures include uh, seeking out shade wherever you can, wearing hats, having sunglasses to protect your eyes, and avoiding any high-risk activities such as using sunbeds or even sunbathing for excessively long. The sun care brand that we typically advocate is going to be a medical skin company, Obagi, who have five different types of sun cream formulations, all with slightly different preferences and nuances to them. And between the five, there's usually an ideal solution for yourself for what's going to be best for you. So first up, we've got the Sun Shield Matte, which is actually probably the most protective, comprehensive form of sun protection within the entire range. So this is broad spectrum, offering protection to UVA and UVB, and it has a mixture of chemical and physical properties that are going to help give it the ultimate protection. This one is absolutely ideal for anyone who's actually on a rather aggressive type of skincare treatment, so one where you're going to have medical grade products that are going to be really transforming your skin on a deeper level with regards to things like pigmentation. And when you have such medical skincare systems, you need the very best protection to protect your new layer of skin that you're getting. For other people, they may find this product to be slightly on the thicker side, particularly for your face, and that's why there are another load of options that Ibaji actually have within their skincare range to offer slightly more cosmetically appealing and yet super effective protection for your face. They've got their sun care tints with their warm and their cool range. So this is really, really nice because it's a little bit thinner and they've actually got two different tones based on the tone of your skin. So it's a little bit more customizable for yourself. This has also got the Skin Cancer Foundation Stamp certifying it's the highest level of protection that you can possibly have. And it's broad spectrum covering A and B and it's a mixture of chemical and physical as well. And the final two are really, really nice options. So these are two different creams that have a different focus elsewhere aside from sun protection. So on the one hand, we've got the Professional C Sun Care, and that's gonna be one where you've got an SPF 30, which is a little bit lower, but actually it's got some vitamin C in it as well, which offers all the benefits of vitamin C, um, which are vast, and that one's really, really nice because it's silicon-based. So cosmetically, it's really, really pleasing, and it feels very luxurious and nice on your face. 
And then there's the Hydra Factor Sun Protection. So this is a little bit similar in concept in that it's a hybrid. So this is your SPF 30 Sun Protection mixed with um, some of the components of their Hydrate formulation, which is a really, really potent, powerful moisturizer. So it's a very moisturizing sun care protection. And this is really, really good for people with dry skin or people who are looking to combine their daily moisturizer with their protection and have it as part of their daily routine. It's just very practical and easy for day-to-day -day life. Thank you very much guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully you can see that sun protection is for everyone and um, is something that we all need to take really, really seriously. So I hope you've learned a lot today. Thank you.